guys, Nick Thomas here. Welcome back to the Academy of Historical Fencing. I'm going to be reviewing this new jacket today. Um, Spez asked me to review this new product of theirs, which is the officer jacket. Um, it's pretty snazzy. Um, you know, I love my sabre work, so I'm certainly going to, to a degree, like the style anyway. But yeah, they asked me to, to do this review. Um, more than anything for me, the interesting thing with this jacket is that it's light. And that's kind of the, um, the real appeal this jacket had to me. Now, over the last few years, I've been using a lot of spares jackets, um, mainly the normal Axel uh, Pedersen standard jacket. Uh, I have one of the early black ones, and then I bought a red one as a replacement, um, maybe the start of the year. And I was a bit disappointed with that one, actually. And the simple reason was, is they'd upped the kind of mass and the, and the weight so much, is that I bought the same size jacket. I've always worn mediums, um, but it got a lot thicker. Um, and generally a bit sort of bulkier, a lot more material in the shoulders, even though the kind of chest and waist was roughly the same. So I just found it was bulky and it was heavy and I was just dripping in sweat from using it compared to the old jacket. Now, to get into the reasons for that, the old black jacket that I had in medium was a 2.5 kilo jacket. When I bought the replacement, uh, which is the red one that I was wearing, um, so it's the same model, uh, same size, it came up to 3.1 kilos. So, you know, it was quite a, you know, a boost in, in weight, uh, as well as the mass, as I said. So yeah, I wasn't too happy with that, and um, I was looking for some lighter options, and, you know, I bought a Neyman briefly and, and used that for a while, um, and more recently my Spares Light AP, which is uh, not on the shop yet, and I'm going to be reviewing that quite soon as well, and that is, it looks basically like the normal AP jacket, but it's just, a, you know, a world apart, um, so much lighter and, and different in, in a lot of ways. It has a lot more in common with this in a lot of uh, areas, just not the actual cut. Um, anyway, onto the light jacket. Um, this weighs 1.55 kilos in size medium, which is identical to the old um, PBT sport fencing coaches jacket that I wore years ago, as in, you know, 10 years ago. Um, so, really, really light. It puts it as one of the lightest jackets on the market. Um, how that compares with the light AP, which I'm going to be reviewing at some stage. Um, if you see uh, this jacket in the videos, it's now patched up. This is my light AP. Um, you'll see that in a lot of videos recently, and it weighs almost the same. Um, the light AP is, uh, you know, I think it's about 20 or 30 grams heavier. Um, with the pads in, um, it's about 150 grams heavier than this. So there's not a lot in it. Um, it is an incredibly light jacket. Now, assuming therefore the sort of coverage is the length of the jacket is roughly similar, um, and the weight is therefore roughly similar to the light AP, but around about half the weight of the standard Axel Pedersen jacket, and that does make it a very, very light jacket. Um, I'm a huge fan of light jackets. Um, people, you know, ask all the time, is, is a certain jacket suitable for you know, sabre, a military sabre over, say, you know, dueling sabre or longsword and things like that. It's the wrong way to look at it. It's not about what weapon is it appropriate for, it is what contact level it's appropriate for. Um, I've used this jacket and that one for loads of um, heavy sparring with heavy weapons. It depends on how heavy you're going and um, what sort of bruises you're willing to accept. Um, so, you're going to have to decide that yourself. Do I think this jacket is suitable for going into a tournament with heavy swords, you know, military sabres um, and, and long swords? No. Do I think it's suitable for that training um, at just a sensible contact level? Yes. So you're going to have to judge that yourself. Um, so I can't really say, is it suitable for certain weapons? That's not really the way it works. But it is a very light jacket. As I said, 1.5 kilos. So um, it has no insertable um, pads in it or anything like that. Um, although I know um, one of the fences in our group did contact them and ask could they have insertable areas put in and, and they were quite happy to accommodate that. So if you wanted to have the insertable pads of the uh, light AP jacket, you could have those put in. Um, right, next up, sizing. Every spare jacket I've ever bought is medium. Um, and chest and um, waist size tend to be about the same from model to model, near enough, um, quite consistent. Um, but this one, the sleeves are a bit longer. Um, you see the cut is just very, very different. It's closely cut to the shoulder, um, unlike the AP, which is, you know, is quite open at the shoulder. So it's closely cut here, um, and then the sleeves have ended up quite long as a result. Now, I'm five foot seven, so not exactly that tall. 
if somebody of maybe closer to six foot was wearing this, it would probably be exactly right on the sleeves. The body of the jacket is about right for me, um, and you'd get away with it a few inches taller, but the arms are a little bit long. Um, that hasn't really been an issue, because once you put your arm guards on and your gloves, and you just don't even notice it. And if I really wanted to, I'll go and have um, a seamstress take the sleeves up a little bit. So that's that. Um, so yeah, a little bit long on the arms for what I'm used to. Uh, the cut. Now, it's cut like a traditional Benson jacket. Um, when I say traditional, I do mean 19th century in many ways, and, and then what carried on with sport fencing. Obviously, they added the crotch section as well later on, but yeah, it's kind of a very classical, traditional fencing jacket. And that means that you've got a close cut to the shoulders. Um, for me, I did a load of sabre training with it, and I found no restriction whatsoever. It was like using my Light AP, which is, um, has been my favourite jacket since I got it. Um, no restriction there whatsoever. What I did find is when I went to paired weapon training using rapier and dagger and sword and buckler is I found a slight restriction going this way for companion weapons. Now I'm up on the, on the upper limit for the medium size so perhaps if there was a little bit more room uh, you might manage with the offhand a little bit more but the light AP obviously has the, the really wide opening and lots of room to move this way so it's kind of individually using one sword the movement's excellent but when you've got companion stuff, I don't find it quite as good as my AP. So I'll probably be inclined to keep this as kind of a saber jacket and use my uh, light AP as a more universal jacket. Uh, right. Um, yeah, it's got the new liner. Um, this new uh, moisture wicking stuff, which I've now used on both this and my light AP. And it's been wonderful. Both the jackets are lighter than the kind of stuff I was using before. But also this moisture wicking material, um, it does seem to dissipate the heat a lot better than the previous jackets. And it also dries really quickly, which is a huge bonus when you're doing multiple days of training or, or even just, you know, in between washes and stuff like that for sessions. So it dries really fast. So I do appreciate that. Um, and I wore, uh, I've only worn this one for two sessions, but um, my AP, my light AP, which is the same materials, I wore over three hours of sparring for um, one of our quarterly sparring um, dues and came out, you know, barely having broken so much of a sweat compared to what I used to have in my old jacket. So I really, really appreciate the light um, weight, the lightweight jackets and the materials that they're made of now. Um, yeah, how the enclosure works. So it's um, zipped and buttoned. You don't have to do the buttons up. There's no necessity to do that, but it will, you know, close the gap off to the zip, provide a bit of protection to it. So, you know, that's purely your choice. You could do a few of the buttons up, you could do all the buttons up, you could do none of them, entirely up to you. So, they are sort of for show, but they're functional to a degree as well. And I suppose you could, in theory, not use the zip and just use the buttons. But I think it's just, you know, it's going to put pressure on everything, so I wouldn't bother doing that. Use the zip by itself, or use both. Um, aside from that, it's like an old school um, fencing jacket, as it's designed to be. It's still got the um, throat catcher on the front, uh, for the blade, well, not a throat catcher, blade catcher for the throat. Um, and yeah, the poppers, you can see the traditional sort of poppers, um, nice and simple, quite traditional, quite strong. What else to say about this jacket? Um, I don't think there's an awful lot really. Um, I said I generally find it comfortable. Uh, for anything single-handed, it works really well, so doing some single rapier stuff and do a military sabre, I was liking it. I used it with some very heavy blades, some of my um, Napoleonic Severe military sabres, and I used it with some uh, cavalry sabres, which are obviously gonna hit very hard. And again, I was happy with the contact levels. You can see the video of me using it with uh, light and heavy cavalry synthetics. I've been using it with steel as well, and it's been going really, really well. So protection-wise, I'm happy with it, but I know some people will want more for their training. Uh, it is marketed specifically as a very light jacket, um, a lightweight jacket, so bear that in mind. Um, I don't think you'd want to take it into, say, most tournaments, but at this level of uh, sparring you normally see me do, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, what else to really say about it? I mean, durability, I've only had it a few weeks, so it's hard to really say much about that, but I've never had a problem with spares durability. A few people have mentioned zip issues, but again, I never had any, so um, not had any problems at all. Um, notice the Spez jackets have added belts onto the back recently. Um, again, this is my light AP jacket, so it has a belt on the back, and, and this uh, master, um, officer jacket has exactly the same, 
which means that you can just belt it in at the waist if it's you know a little bit too loose, which is a really handy feature. Um, I could have had this in a custom size. I don't particularly like buying custom size jackets. I like to have off the shelf because I like to have stuff that I can just show to my students and say, this is the product, this is the size, you can just order it straight off the, you know, off the rack and it's easy to get. So I'm not a huge fan as a rule of getting uh, made to measure, although they will make you uh, made to measure jackets. And a few of my students have bought them and, and, and like them, so they seem to be doing fine with those as well. Anyway, um, it's sort of, aside from not liking it quite so much on companion weapons, therefore I'm really, really positive. And how does it compare to my light AP, which is the one I said it, as soon as I used it, it was my favourite jacket from the first day I used it. So how does it compare to the light AP? Kind of as you'd expect really, is that the weight is exactly the same, so nice and light breathes well. Um, the movement, as I said, the light AP is slightly better for companion weapon stuff. Um, and um, the, the light AP has inserts, uh, foam uh, inserts in the shoulders, in the, the front and in the flanks. So you can you know, put those in or not. I've actually taken all of mine out except the shoulders because I like it to be nice and light. So I'm using pretty much the same jacket here. Uh, and which would I say is better? Well, I would say all round, the light AP is a more universal jacket for used, you know, using across a variety of things because the movement for companion weapon stuff is slightly better and it can have foam, uh, foam inserts put in if you want to up the armor a little bit. Um, so it makes it a bit more versatile, if you like. Whereas the um, officer jacket does mostly the same job, but is just, you know, a little bit more fashionable. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you like to compromise a little bit of, for a bit of style, which there's nothing wrong with that at all. It looks great. Um, will I be keeping it? I don't see why not. Um, as I said, it's, I'll, I'll use it mainly as a sabre jacket. Um, when I say sabre, I do mean uh, Napoleonic military sabres, so pretty heavy stuff, not the kind of um, lightweight dueling sabres that some people use. So um, yeah, it's not, I'm not using it as a light jacket as such. I'm just going to be using it for single sword work. Uh, and I'd use it for side swords and stuff as well. But I mean. It looks like a sabre jacket, so, or, you know, maybe some kind of uh, uh, small swords and, and FAs and stuff like that. So I'm going to use it for kind of 19th century type fencing and use my light AP as well, so I'll probably just alternate. Um, anything else to say about it? Think of anything? No. <laughs> uh, so now I think that's probably about it. Uh, I'm really liking the jacket. Um, if I keep it, and I'm pretty sure I will, because it looks nice and it does a good job, I think I'll get the sleeves taken up a little bit because, as I said, they are just a little bit long for me. Uh, I don't notice it when I'm sparring, but if I want to wear it for any kind of drills or when I'm teaching, yeah, I'd like to have it taken up a little bit and obviously get patches put on. But yeah, so my only limitation for it here is this restriction here, is that when I'm trying to cross, as you often do, with, see with, with your um, um, daggers with rapier, it's crossing over like this, so I feel a slight pull this way, but it is on the other side of the chest sizing for this for medium, um, of which, because of the closer cut for the, um, for the armholes, that makes a tiny bit of restriction for using companion weapons. Whereas, you know, I stand uh, with my least shoulder forward and I do sabre work, um, there's no restriction whatsoever and it works really, really well. So, um, there's the Spez Officer jacket. It's lightweight, it looks cool. Um, I really do like it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.